think it was eight years ago, the archivist came into my office in the castle and said, you won't believe it, Your Grace, but we've got, I believe, the original capability plans that no one knows are in existence, that Mr. Brown actually created this landscape here at Beaver. And so it was very, very much a coincidence that we were doing a parkland plan for Natural England of all our landscape here and at Croson. And we fell upon this extraordinary find in John Phipps, who's the world expert on brown. And really, he then came to pour over the documents. And I remember it was a wet sort of February day, John coming into my office. He was so excited. He could see these, um, this, this planting of these trees that were so obviously brown. And then we started to unfold these documents in our archives that um, really gave it concrete evidence that it was. And um, I thought, wow, that is amazing. No one knows this. I think for all those around the world who might be sharing this moment with me now, Capability Brown is most probably the greatest landscape architect in the British Isles. And really why Beaver is so extraordinary is because it's just about one of his last. Just after he drew this plan for the 4th Duke and the 11th Duchess, um, he then sadly died. And this really pleading letter that we found in the archives saying to the fourth duke that Mr. Brown grows very old, but he's desperate to leave behind something that really matters, and that being his plan for Beaver. By the time he had drawn up his plans for Beaver, like all artists, his thinking had sort of gone off the palette. So he was not thinking as he was when he designed Blenheim and Stowe, one of his early jobs where he helped William Kent. He was really inspired by this landscape and there was no boundaries. So when you go around our gardens, I don't want you to imagine that they're going to be immaculate. It is, some of it, work in progress. It's a woodland garden, fundamentally, and you need a good pair of walking boots because it can vary. It can be a mile long or it can be four miles long. And you can do the immediate woodland gardens around the castle, or you can go further to the obelisk. There is a wonderful walk that takes you all around really the boundaries of Brown's landscape and then you can look back from the peacock and you're on the obelisk and see the castle as Mr. Brown would have intended visitors to see it. The castle being open this year is sort of like a new beginning again for us because we're open a lot more. Our, our restaurants open again and there's food here for everyone to buy a tea. I've done a manners family tea and the sandwiches and scones. And the gardens are always open with the castle and so you can come and enjoy both the castle and the gardens. And of course we've got our Capability Brown demonstration and film going on within the castle so you can see it in action and the story of restoring the gardens. People say to me, it's your legacy, Emma. It's not really my legacy. It's the legacy of Mr. Brown that I was lucky enough to fall upon in the archives.